what I, the question that I need to ask is, who keeps green lighting M light, M light? The question that I need to ask is, and I think this is on everybody else's mind, is who keeps green lighting M. Night Shyamalan, I can't even say his name. Who keeps green lighting these films is just the question to be asked. Okay, so like I said earlier, uh, <laughs> I don't know who keeps giving the thumbs up or the green light for this. And it just, you know, it's too twofold that if you're an up and coming filmmaker or a filmmaker aspiring to get stuff in production, then this should be inspiration that if this piece of crap uh, can be made, so can your film. And on the other side, is this the downfall of... <laughs> Charlie is very upset about this. Uh, is this the downfall of cinema? I mean, it has been for a while with this guy. I really feel like he's a troll. I really feel like this is some kind of, you know, cosmic joke being played on us that he just keeps making these really bad films and marketing them as such you know thrillers and movies with twists and some people are like oh well the sixth sense was so great i was like what like at the trailer when he's like i see dead people and then the next cut he's looking at bruce willis i'm like yeah bruce willis is dead it's like those old uh, analogy exercises for the SAT, A, A is to B, and B is to C, it's all in the editing. Like, he literally just said he sees dead people, then he's talking to Bruce Willis. So, you know, it's the coolest off effect. I feel like I'm giving a lecture to my class. But anyway, um, I, I can't even believe I'm condescending in my career to even give this a review. I think the last time I did was for Fangoria. Uh, with the village, we had a contest of like which was worse, Van Helsing or the Village. So I think that's the last time I talked about a Shyamalan film. Charlie had to book it; he was he was done. So I just wrote a bunch of notes in the theater. I'm not even gonna like process them or try to be as you know organized as I was with Annette. And now that I saw this old crap, Annette is now like you know Citizen Kane compared to this. So I have to rethink my opinion of Annette. Um, if I look old, it's because this, this movie aged me 50 years. So it's, a you know, apropos that it's called old. Okay, so what do we know about old? It's, they're all stuck on a beach that accelerates the, you know, the aging process. Why the beach does this is never explained. Uh, the ending of the film has the same kind of ending as the village. So spoiler, really, I should actually save you the money to go see this. Um, I saw a few reviews online, uh, <laughs> one by Ebert, I can't believe he even took the time to, like, write a legit criticism of this with, like, real film studies terms, like, this, this film does not even deserve his pen and paper. Um, oh, I'm using my phone to record, but there was some, like, online chats about, I can't believe this guy's still making movies, that's pretty much the consensus, but I guess people are going to see him. We've lowered our standards in this country to this. This is, this is where we are. Um, and then people make fun of that. I like the Fast and the Furious films. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't... Okay, the main thing is, I don't know why people allow him to write the script. The script was so poorly written. In film school, we are taught that you need to show it, not say it. And literally everything was said. Like... Hi, my name is so-and-so. I work in a museum, so I know how to do this. I'm so-and-so. I know how to do this. They literally were on the beach, like, going in a circle, speaking this way. And it was just so stilted and didactic that I was like, is this, is this a joke? Is this supposed to be comedy? Because the dialogue was so poorly written. And then on top of that, to cast, like, Gael Garcia Bernal, and I tried my hardest to Rex Buster it, and I just couldn't, like... He belongs in E2 Mama Tambien and Tambien La Lubia, all the Tambien films. Uh, he is a film festival foreign epic actor. This type of film is so beneath him. I really wish I could tell him and just be like, no mas, Gael, no mas, por favor. It's just, <laughs> just muy merda. Like, oh man, Gael. 
Uh, and then there's stuff in the trailer that's not in the movie, la la la, but anyway, so, uh, the woman that plays his wife is like, I work at a museum, I've seen bodies like this, this is what this means, like, literally, like, stop everything, let me, like, you're at a, um, play for third graders, and they each, like, step up to the front of the stage and, like, say their line and then step back. That's, I, in fact, maybe a third grade play is probably better produced than this. Um, for some reason, his wife was taller than he was, and it was, like, very noticeable. Um, and so, I guess the moral of the story is, like, don't book your family vacation discount on, like, you know, booking.com or some cheap, like, online place that you found it. But he's like, where did you find this place? And she's like, I found it online. And it's like... Some kind of, like, I understand if, like, back in the day when the internet was new and this was some kind of, like, new thing was to book your vacation online, but she said it like it was some kind of epiphany when it's like, hello, newsflash, everybody books their vacation online. So it was, like, some kind of, like, big moment when she said that, when it was just actually really, uh, I, I, I really feel like I aged watching this. If that was the, like, final outcome, then I guess the joke's on me. Oh. Of course, M. M. Night Shyamalan has to insert himself and have this, like, big old cameo in it. And it was just like, dude, like, just. Uh, so, okay, so. Obviously, they keep trying to get off the beach and they can't. So I don't know if your Gen Xers remember um, the Third Eye um, show on Nickelodeon when Nickelodeon actually had, like, really good shows and not, like crap they have now or for the last 10 15 years but there was a show called children of the stones or was it children yeah children of the stones and it took place in Avebury, uh uh england which i actually went actually how funny i'm wearing the hat i bought there wow that's like clairvoyant i bought this in Avesbury, but that's like so this british uh scientific team went to this town to like it was kind of like stonehenge and figure out like what these the magic behind the stones were but it, in fact, it was all like the village people, um, the people, in, <laughs> not the band, um, and all the people like would turn to stone at night. And so when they find out the secret, like they try to leave the town, but every road out of town like leads back to the town. So the whole like TV series is them trying to get out of the city before they turn into stone, which was amazing. I think it's on DVD now. Anyway, I highly recommend Children of the Stones. So they try to get off the beach in the most asinine ways. Um, this one guy who has like the only clue out of all of them is like well we can swim and do this and then he's like anybody know how to swim and everybody's like no not me and then literally because the aging process happens so quickly um they're like losing their life by the by the hour um literally five hours later he's like i was on the swim team i'll go and it's like why didn't you say that like five hours ago if time is of the essence why didn't you say hey i'll try to swim like five hours ago, you just literally aged yourself 10 years and now you think you're going to swim and make it. So, I mean, totally asinine. It, it was just like ridiculous. Um, and it's just like, everything was just so like on the nose, you know, as like this woman at the beginning is like, I don't, I have a calcium deficiency. And then later she's like, Oh, now my bones are aching. Cause I don't have calcium. <laughs> it was like, we didn't see that one coming. I'll tell you that. Um, and then the guy that plays the doctor, he keeps saying, this is literally the village, but like tropical village. Uh, he's like, what's the movie with Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando? And it was like, oh God, it is like, hold on. Uh, I just had to look it up. It, it's called the Missouri breaks. So he kept saying the doctor was like, he was going crazy. And he's like, what's the film with Marlon Brando and Jack Nicholson? And like, nobody knew what it was. And he kept asking this question and um oh god my camera's gonna stop so i gotta like press pause and start again oh god so I mean, <laughs> this video is probably it's all crappy but it's still better than the film was okay so the doctor kept asking what's the film with jack nicholson and marlon brando what's this film with jack, jack nicholson and marlon brando and so i thought ah you know i know all these films like there has to be a clue so i was thinking you know like I know Marlon Brando is on the waterfront. Like, I was trying to go through my head, like, what film is this? Because there has to be a clue in that. 
and and how to get off the beach because at the end there there was a way and <laughs> just so ridiculous how they finally the survivors get off the beach so i did a little research online this is the only research i did because i just was not going to waste any more time on this film um it's called the missouri breaks and i think it was a newsweek article so i really try and not just go to fan you know based sites but like you know legitimate people that research um turns out has nothing to do with the film just a total random nothing burger like he just used it and then M. Night Shyamalan was like talking about inspirations for this film and he like named off all these films that had absolutely nothing to do with like the style or theme of this film like Jaws Jaws has oh there's water and a beach <laughs> same as this movie no it was just uh it's just so infuriating to like have people that are actually in the industry working making money make terrible films like literally Tommy Wiseau is a better director than M. Night Shyamalan, and, and so is Neil Brain. I will stand by that. At least their films are entertaining. This is... Uh, when I found out that the Missouri Breaks was just so, like, just inserted in there with absolutely no meaning whatsoever, yet he kept repeating it over and over, like, what's the name of this film? Why? Everything in a film needs to have a place and a purpose, and if you just insert something just to be quirky and random, you know, come on, that's just ridiculous everything in this film just had absolutely zero purpose. There was like, you're supposed to show it, not say it. Like I said, it's like a third grade play. Let's go back to, okay. So finally, like, I don't want to say who, but they stabbed somebody with a knife that's rusty. And they're like, it's rust. Like, we didn't see the rust. Like, we can see it. And then there's a point where somebody says, oh, you have wrinkles. Like, we see it. The special effect makeup guy, like, did it. Like, we don't have to, like, hear it. Like, we'd like to see them age and, like, feel it. But they, they said everything. Like, oh, there's a rock. And I felt like I was, like, learning English for the first time because of just how pointless and, and, and trite and banal the fucking Kyle Garcia banal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kyle. Hey, I was rough on Adam Driver for Marriage Story. Gael, you need to do more. You too, Mama Tom, the end. Like, this was just not your cup of tea. Gael Garcia, but no. Um, okay, too bad he didn't decide yesterday. Oh, so finally the survivor, like, somebody from the beginning of the film, like, gave a clue, a warning to these people before they went on the beach. And, like, you age every day 50 years. So, like, the next day he decides to, like, look at the clue. And I was like, really? Everybody in the film would have survived if he literally, like, read the clue before they went. So it was just infuriating where you're just like, oh, yeah, of course, of course he didn't look at the clue until everybody's dead. Um, the big, I can't even read this. I was, oh, yeah. Okay. I really feel like they ran out of funding or something because it was like the, the end was like the, the twist ending or whatever, like, and why they were sent to the beach or why they're on the beach was like, okay, M. Night Shyamalan, we're running out of money. You need to like wrap this up <laughs> like a total Diana, uh, Mr. Tops ending. Um, they had to wrap it up real quick. They're like, hey, like we did this whole thing on the beach. We're like running out of time to shoot. You need to like tie this up. They're like, okay, like, how are we going to make this make sense? Why are they on the beach? So they were like, <laughs> and uh, you're just like, okay, yeah, that would have been a great story. Like, or either keep them on the beach and have like some phantasmagoric. Um, yeah, so Google storage is full, of course. Had to <laughs> love technology. Anyway, like, I can't believe I have to start the conclusion over because I'm almost done. Um, the big unveiling was so, like, ridiculous. If you saw The Village, you saw this movie. Um, it was some grand scheme that was, like, <laughs> so ridiculously unbelievable. And it's, like, the movie should have just been about the beach or about this sci-fi reason they're on the beach or, like, have some kind of exposition. But it feels like it was just thrown in there um, last minute. Like, literally with no thought whatsoever. I I have said before, like, the worst movie I've ever seen or whatever is this. I'm going to have to say, in a long time, I have not seen a script this bad. 
I think the concept would have been interesting because kind of like, you know, I thought it was kind of going to be like Saw, how it was like a lesson to these people to like really value time with each other. And now that time is speeding up, like reevaluate, you know, your time that you do have. Um, so that would have been very profound. Nope. I mean, there's maybe a few seconds dedicated to that. There's no like grand theme, um, any commentary. There's really no reason for any of this. It's just, am I supposed to be thrilled? Am I supposed to be scared? Am I supposed to come away going, oh, now I'm going to treasure the people in my life? What am I supposed to take away from this? Just like, oh, there's an evil, you know, plot out there. There's always going to be somebody out there, you know, calling the shots behind the scenes, that kind of like Wizard of Oz, Zardoz, uh, you know, element. No, I mean, they try to, but it's hasty and not to a point where you, like, really do care about anybody. So, um, I think probably the most interesting thing would be the children involved and then why they age quicker than the adults. It kind of made sense, but not really. Um, it was interesting to see their, you know, progression from, like, six years old to, like, 50. That was probably the only thing that was mildly interesting. Um... I think the adults die too soon because if you age 50 years and they probably would have been 80, my dad probably would still be getting off the island and trying to, and he's 80. He probably would have made it out of all of them. But anyway, so yeah, the end was just kind of like rushed and like, oh, the old evil, you know, pharmaceutical company there, I ruined it, uh, doing experiments. And the beach is never explained as to why it's there or the resort. Anyway, I'm just rambling on. It's just a really bad movie. So I did buy the um, AMC pass to, like, see three movies a week. So I'll probably be doing a lot of reviews now. But anyway, um, I really wish that people would stop giving M. Night Shyamalan money to make these films. I, I, or otherwise, they're, they are a big joke. So... Um, yeah, I, I, there's gonna be people that are like, oh, I liked it. Uh, fine. I mean, sure, you can like it, but it's, it's terrible. You can't tell me the dialogue is good at all. Um, yeah, so now I'm rethinking <laughs> Annette. Now I'm like, oh, I'll go see Annette again, because that to me is like, at least some thought was put into it. And it's really sad when your standards are like, did people even care or like think about this film before they made it? But now I'm just rambling. And maybe that's an effect of watching this film is now I'm turning into uh, a rambling mess as well. So, um, again, I don't know how to end these YouTube videos. you got to just kind of just press pause and just go. So, yeah, next one coming up soon.